So good morning, Year 6. We're carrying on with algebra again this week. Uh, this time we are looking at how we form equations, how we form our own algebraic equations. So, OK, so this is our first one, and it says to use Multilink and Base 10 to represent these equations. So if you've got things like Lego and things at home, you could use different size Lego to represent different bits. Here we've got the multi-link cubes on the board and uh, the base 10. So if I thought that the multi-link, I could use that to represent X and I could use the base 10 cube to represent one. So, okay, so once you've got your Lego or your pieces together, I want you to see if you can represent 2X plus three what it would look like if you've got 2x, 3x plus 1, and 4 plus x, using whatever cubes you've decided make the x and the 1. Have a go, and then turn back on, and we'll do this through together. Okay, so if I use this multi-link cube to represent an x, in this equation I've got 2x. So I'm going to have a go at putting 2x there. But then I've also got an additional 3. So I'm going to put 3 of the base 10 cubes down there. So, and our next one is 2x. So just 2 of the, of the multi-link cubes. And then we've got 3x plus 1, so 3 multi-link cubes and then we've just got the plus one one of our base 10 cubes and then of course we've got four plus x so four is relating to number isn't it so one two three oh have i got enough oh i have so four of those plus x so plus one more of these and that should be something like you've got but with your different colored uh, Lego or the different size cubes you've used. And as we can see, that's we did get right. Uh, the PowerPoint. So now, can you write each statement as an algebraic equation? So just with letters and numbers, can you write something that would tell me that I've got three more than T? I've got double t and t divided by 6. So if we go back, you can see that these were algebraic equations. So 2x plus 3 meant 2 times the x plus 3. But here we had 3 times the x plus 1. Using a similar system, can you do equations for these, for the 3 more than t, double t, and t divided by 6? Have a go at writing some down, and then uh, turn the video back on when you're ready to go through the answers. So if we have, looking at this one, 3 more than t, we start with t, and we're going to add 3 to t, so t plus 3. If we've got double t, that's 2t. Remember, it's like 2 times t, but when we're writing in algebra, we don't have to put the times symbol in. So we just put them next to each other. And then we've got t divided by 6. So we've got our uh, 2t, which is double t t divided by 6. So t divided by 6. Remember like when we're working with our fractions, that line is the division line. So it's t divided by 6. Did you get that? I hope you did. If not, don't worry because we'll be going through more of these equations. So x can have different values. So this is our expression, but this will change depending on the value I give x. So, if I say that x is 7, then the answer will be 12. If I say that x is 10, the answer is 15. 
If I say that x is 20, what do you think the answer will be? Yes, you're right, it's 25. So x is always an unknown value until it's specified for you. But we can write equations without knowing the answer. So x plus 5 equals 11. We can now work this out. Because if I add, added 5 to x to get 11, I can take 5 from 11 to find out what x is. So have a look at this. I think of a number, and I'm because we don't know what it is, we're going to call this number x, and we'll use the cube for this. What would the algebra for this be? Yes, we'd probably use the algebra of x. Okay, I think of my number, my number would be one cube, but we call it x. I add five to it. So I've now got x, and we've got one, two, three, four, five. So it'd be x add five. It says my answer is seven. So x plus five equals seven. So if we added on five to get seven, we can take the five away and now we can work out what x equals. x equals two. Can you see that? So if we had five plus the x made seven, if we take those five away, we then have that the x is equal to those two. Have a go at this one. The total cost of the rugby ball and the panda is six pounds. Form an equation to represent this information. Have a go, write it down and then turn back on and we'll go through the equation together. So we know that we add the panda and we've got the rugby ball. We've given a price for the rugby ball, haven't we? So two plus P for panda equals six pounds. So the rugby ball and the panda is six pounds. So we could work that out, couldn't we? So instead of the two pounds plus the panda, we could say panda equals six pounds, take away the two for the rugby ball. So we can work out from this that panda is going to be equal to four pounds. Another one. This time it says the total cost of a train, two bucket and spades and one t-shirt is 18 pounds. Form an equation to represent this information. So we've got some figures, but we've also got some, we've just got symbols. So have a go at making our number sentence, the equation that's got the letters in it. And we know that it equals 18. So we know it's going to be equal to 18. What's the sequence here going to be? Have a go and turn the video back on when you're ready to have a look at the answer. So we've got 18, but we said we're going to work out what we're adding together. So the total cost is a train. Where's the train? We've got train, so that's three pounds for the train. Plus two buckets and spades. So two buckets and spades is two Y, because that's the symbol we're using here. The expression we're using here, the variable. And one T-shirt. So plus t equals 18. Hopefully you got that too. Have a go at questions one and two on the worksheet. When you're happy that you've done those questions, turn back on and we'll go through the next bit. So we're going to write an equation that represents our bar model. So our bar model we know the whole is 19. So we can have our whole as 19. So it's equal to 19. What have we got here though? Ah, oh, right, we've got A 
plus a plus a plus 4 equals 19. Now if we look at that carefully, we can actually see we've got one, two, three a's. So we could actually write 3a plus 4 equals 19. And actually from that, if you look at it carefully, you think I actually can solve that because if I know I've got three lots of A plus four, make 19, one A would be five. Let's have a go at this one. Pause the video, write what you think the algebra equation would be for this bar model and then turn back on to see the answer. This time we have 15 as our answer, but the figure we're given, we've given 9 and 2b. So 9 plus 2b equals 15. And again, it's one that we could solve, couldn't we? Not all algebra we can solve. Sometimes it is left as letters. But on this occasion, we can see that if we've got 9 and 2b make 15, if we took 9 away and then divide the up what's left by 2, uh, by two we would get the b. So this one's a bit trickier. This time I want you to draw the bar model, okay? So what bar model will represent these two equations? Have a go at both of them and then turn back on when you've got your bar model diagram in front of you and then check it against mine. So my 100% bar is going to be 18 because that's my figure there. My equals, and then that is broken into how many lots of C? Yes, three lots of C. So this would be my model. 3C equals 18. And on this one, this is my bar model for my 100%, which is X. And on this one, I've got eight and four equals x. Hopefully that's what you got as well. Have a go at this one. Step one, think of a number. Okay, so step one is think of a number and we're gonna represent our number using one of these multi-link cubes that we used before. So I might call that x. That's the number I've thought of, okay? And then I'm gonna double it. So we've now got two X. So I started with an X, I've now got two X. But next, as you can see, it says add 10. So I've got 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. There's a coup, so I've got, this is two X plus 10. And then it says step four, divide by two. So when we divide by two, we're taking away one of our x's, because we're dividing by two, we have two x, we're taking one away, so we've got one x left, and we're taking half of these away. So five of these, we have 10, we're gonna take five. So we should have, and then we should have one x and five. And it says, take away the number you first thought of. So if I take away the number I first thought of, I should have just five left. But it says, what if step three was to add 16? What will the answer be then? So have another go. I'll leave this one up here so you can see what the steps are. But think that step three is not add 10, it's add 16. What will the answer be then? So did you get that the answer would be eight? And we can work it through because here we would have had 16. And then it says divide by two. So that would be eight. And then we took our original number away, our X away, and we then would have had the eight. Okay, so that'd be eight is your answer. Okay, so have a look at these. 
which of these is the correct expression? So which one is the correct one for Mandy thinks of a number, she multiplies it by four and then subtracts 0 0.5 and our answer is 2.5. Which one of these is going to be the right one? So think about which one it is, A, B, C or D. Have a careful look, pause if you need to have a little bit of thinking time and then turn back on. Now it says that Mandy thinks of a number and multiplies it by four. So I know it can't be this one because this is an N, her number multiplied by four. So I know it can't be that one. Four N's, so that could be her number multiplied by four. That one could be right. And C could be right. Again, it's four N. But then this one is N hasn't got multiplied by four, so it can't be D. So I'm left with B and C. She's, and then subtracts 0 0.5. So subtracts 0 0.5, this one's adding 0 0.5, so it can't be this one. So this must be the correct answer B. And let's check it through. She multiplies four, her number by 4, so 4n, four and then subtracts, so that's the subtraction symbol, 0 0.5, and she has 2.5 as her answer. So B is the correct one. And have a look at this next one. A similar thing, we've got a... Uh, an equation here. So I think of a number, I divide it by four and my answer is 20. The equation below is incorrect. It does not match this information. It says circle the error. If you have a circle, I'd like you to just write out and on your paper circle the error. But now I want you to explain why it's incorrect and what the correct expression would be if we'd written the right equation down. Pause the video, have a go and then turn back on. OK, so you're right. It's this bit that's wrong, the 4n, because that means 4, lots of n, 4 times n. And this one, it says it divided her number by 4. So she should have had n divided by 4 equals 20. Or you could have written it n over 4, because again, that also means division equals 20. So she'd written multiplication here instead of the division. So that's the end of our practice. I want you to finish the rest of the worksheet and we'll post the answers tomorrow. Hope you get on well. If you don't have any problems, please let us know on the blog and we'll see what we can do to help.